Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, and we are in Psalm number 18 today. Psalm 18, verse 1. Get your Bible, if it is possible, and open it up to Psalm 18. Remember, you can study all of God's Word with me any time that you want to, as much as you want to, using my audio Bible messages. Just choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through the entire Bible, all 31,000 plus verses, verse by verse. Going on five series, this is the fifth, the New Testament is done, so we're this far in the Old Testament. Moving right along here in series number five. So, that's at the BibleVerseByVerse.com where all you ever need to bring is your Bible and a hunger for God's Word. <clears throat> and Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your Word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Psalm 18, verse 1. Some people are easy to love because they are so good. And God should be loved by everyone because he's the best. Two, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. So the words that David uses to describe God here is saying that God is his security and not anyone or anything else. The place to go when you are in trouble is God always God. When trouble hits us, when temptation hits us, when challenges hit us, prayer should be automatic. Turn to God for your help and your security. Three, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised so shall I be saved from mine enemies. God was David's refuge, but he called upon the Lord anyway. If God is your fortress, if he is your refuge, then the way that you get inside of that fortress is through prayer. That opens the door, puts you in. Otherwise, you're outside. Four. The sorrows of death compassed me, and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. So, according to David, ungodly people were coming at him like a flood, and the attack was on. Trouble was coming at David also, like a flood. Five. The sorrows of hell compass me about. The snares of death were round about me. David was trapped. And so he felt helpless. Sometimes God lets people get into situations exactly like that, where we feel trapped and helpless, and we are. Because it's in those situations that people seek him harder than ever. It's also only the way that some people will ever turn to God and be saved. And as for his people, when they get trapped, and they become helpless, 
and they turn to God with fervent prayer? When things are hopeless, you know, and there's no human solution, God sometimes waits till the situation gets like that and then does act, and he gets all the credit. Everybody can see it was a God thing that delivered the situation, turned it around. So six, in my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even unto his ears. See, if you call out to God and you really, really mean business as a Christian, your prayer is going to bring you right into the presence of God. God will hear your prayer, but you got to be talking to him. Not putting on a show like the Pharisees did, trying to impress people who hear. you got to be talking to him, and you've got to be sincere. If you mean business when you pray, you don't have to worry about the fact. God will hear you, as long as you don't have any unconfessed sins in your life blocking the way. Seven, then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was angry. David is in trouble, so he prays, and God is furious at those who would dare to hurt one of his children. And the next several verses are a poetic discourse of God's reaction to David's prayer. So let's just read these things together. Beginning in verse 8, this is a reaction to David's fervent prayer for help. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth, devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down, and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon the cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round, round about him was dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them. And he shot out lightnings and vanquished them. Then the channels of the waters were seen, and the foundations of the world were laid bare. At thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. He sent from above and took me, and drew me out of many waters. So, what a picture of God reaction, reacting, I should say, to the fervent prayer of his children who are in need. God is so angry that his mouth spits fire. That's what That was his response to David's prayer. And God is pictured as coming to David's rescue by zipping through the cosmos on the back of an angel. And David also, in verse 12, at the brightness that, it, that was before him, the thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. You know what David is describing here? He's, he's describing the artillery of heaven, God's weapons. God took off, going full blast, and he attacked after David prayed for his help. And I love verse 13, the Lord also thundered in the heavens and the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. You know, God's voice is often connected to thunder in Scripture. And here the Lord is coming with weapons blazing and his voice is thundering. And all this divine drama is for the sake of his one child, David, who prayed to him. And just remember this, since God has no favorites, you can be sure that you are his through Jesus Christ and that God will respond to your prayers the same way. God will give you what you need with the same level of intensity that he responded to David and his prayers. 
And I love 14 too, by the way. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them, shot out lightnings and discomfited them. Then the channels of the waters were seen, and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. These last several verses that I have been reading are David's Holy Spirit-inspired and very colorful way of saying, got me, God got me out of this messy situation when I prayed to him. It's as if God dropped everything else that he was doing in the entire universe to go and help David after David prayed. And of course, God does not have to drop everything to give you the help that you need because he can do a whole lot of things at the exact same time. But the point is that you are going to receive this kind of special attention from God when you pray. If you mean business, when you pray. That's the important thing. 16, he sent from above. He took me, he drew me out of many waters. In other words, God reached down from the sky and saved David. 17, he delivered me from my strong enemy and from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. This strong enemy could have been Goliath, could have been King Saul, because Saul had the entire Israelite army behind him as he hunted David like an animal for 10 years. This strong enemy could have been the devil himself, who was always looking to devour God's people, and still is. But whoever it was, whatever this strong enemy was, well, they were stronger than David. But David, with God on his side, prevailed. So if you have a strong enemy coming against you today, and you have realized that the help of man is vain. There is no help coming. The Calvary is not going to come to the rescue. There is no Calvary. When you call on God, He is stronger than any strong enemy you might have. 18. They came upon me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. David's enemies and David's troubles came upon him in the day of his calamity, meaning they came upon him when he wasn't ready. David was blindsided. He was helpless to deal with the situations that confronted him. And if it had not been for God, he never would have survived. 19. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. God saved David because God cared about him. God delighted in him. God cares about everyone. He will save anyone who turns to him with repentance to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He'll save you. 20. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands hath he recompensed me. David did some bad things in his life, very bad things, probably worse things than you and I have done. But when he repented, God forgave him. And God always gave David a fresh start. Now, sometimes there were consequences to the sins that he committed, but the forgiveness was there when he repented. And God gave him a fresh start. And God blessed David's obedience. And God will do the same for us. 21, for I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. And that was true of David. And it's not that David never sinned. We know he sinned. But what he's talking about is not wicked, the wickedly departing from God, meaning to continue in a lifestyle of disobedience. In other words, David never turned his back on God and said, I don't want you to be my God. I'm going to start serving idols. His son Solomon did that. Lots of people in Israel's history have done that. Lots of so-called Christians have done that. 
They've turned their back on God. I don't want you to be my God. They lose your, their faith. David never did that. In spite of all the bad that he did, he never, never rejected God. He who endures to the end shall be saved. As long as you want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, he will be your Lord and Savior. Just don't reject him. Sin can widow away at the fabric of our faith if it's not repented of and confessed as Christians. And over time, we can see that faith diminish until it no longer exists. Sin will do that. Don't let that happen. Be like David. Don't turn your back on God. Okay, we'll stop right there. Study all of God's Word with me at thebibleversebyverse.com. If you'd like to be a part of Scripture Verse by Verse, that would be great. You can be by praying for me and God's Word. and when you, Because that makes you an immediate part and a very important part of this ministry. And also, when you take a break from studying with me at thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the Donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead, because that also makes you a part of this ministry. And I'd appreciate that very much. And do go check out thebibleversebyverse.com, the Scripture Verse by Verse website found at thebibleversebyverse.com. And if you haven't started a verse-by-verse -verse study with me, then do it today because it'll bless you because it's the word of God never watered down. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.